Every year, the new A series chip is the fastest ever in an iPhone and it's better than Apple's ever made before. Every year, the camera has a lower aperture, it has improved HDR for photos, and now we even have Dolby Vision HDR. Furthermore, every year, the screen quality is a lot better than what it was the last year, and the screen build quality is also definitely a lot better than what it was last year as per Apple. Which brings me to my next point. Every year, you and I need to sit down and talk about exactly all of these things that we just mentioned and more in real world usage. And today is that day. Today, we're looking at the iPhone 12 series six months after after its release and six months after real world use. Is it still worth it or should you wait for the iPhone 13? Let's get into it. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I am using the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is the phone that I have been rocking for the last one year. But that being said, I also bought my mom the iPhone 12 mini and I have tested out phones at the extreme ends of the lineup of the 12 series. So don't worry, this applies to every iPhone in the 12 series. But today's video is applicable to all these phones in the market. Also, let me add the 12 mini is fantastic. Okay, the first feature that we're going to be looking at is 5G. Yes, 5G is fantastic. It's a revolutionary internet speeds and it's definitely an outstanding feature for the series of phones. But I'm from India and this is not applicable. We don't have 5G. It pretty much doesn't exist in our country. So if this is a reason that you're looking at buying the iPhone 12 series, you can. We probably will get 5G in a couple of years, but we don't have it yet. So as of now, 5G is one of those features that you do not want to get this phone for. And six months down the line, things haven't changed on that front. Next, we're going to be talking about these guys, which are basically the cameras on your iPhone 12 series. Now, let's look at the ultra wide lens, which is pretty much everyone's favorite lens because of its amazing wide field of view, how great it is for vlogging and capturing landscape. The ultra wide lens is identical to the 11 series. Now, Apple said their image signal processor has improved. Maybe it has, but to the naked eye and to 90% of the people out there on the market, you are not going to see a difference in the ultra wide lens. The color science may be slightly better. The edges might be a bit sharper, less distorted, but on the overall, it's not too different. I had the iPhone 11 Pro prior to this, and I do not see a difference in the ultra wide lens. Let's talk about the telephoto lens, which is only available on the Pro models. Now, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro series have the exact same telephoto lens, and there's legit no difference. Zero difference in all of this. Now, the iPhone 12 Pro Max does have a telephoto lens that has an improved focal length. It's 65 millimeters compared to the previous 50 whatever millimeters we had on the other phones. But what you need to know is that it has a narrower aperture, which basically means it's going to be worse in low light. That's not a massive win for anybody out there. But in good lighting, the lens is pretty sharp. The new focal length is definitely a good change. But the drawback is that it's only available on the Pro Max and not on the 12 Pro. It pretty much puts most camera lovers in a puzzle because a lot of people don't like the size of the Pro Max and they probably prefer a phone that's a lot smaller in their pocket. Okay, let's move on to the standard wide lens, the one that we have right here on all the phones. Okay, so the standard lens is great. It's definitely improved. All the phones have a newer wider aperture of f1.6. The image quality and HDR has been improved. The images do pop a lot, but you're really going to nitpick, actually going to compare it to an older iPhone like that on the 11 series. To be completely honest, I came from the 11 Pro and I've shot a bunch of pictures on my 11 Pro. And I've also shot a bunch of pictures in the exact same locations on my 12 Pro Max. And it's a little hard to see. Now, the 12 Pro Max is supposed to have a larger sensor, but honestly, unless shooting in low light or you're actually zooming in massively into these images, you're not going to see a performance gain. And that brings me to my next point. Does it really, really matter to majority of the iPhone camera users out there? Honestly, no. Most of us just pick up a phone, take a picture. As long as it looks good, it looks good. And that's basically that. Unless you're a professional mobile photographer, it's not going to make that much of a difference for you. But is it a good camera system? Definitely. It's a great photo camera. HDR is fantastic. I have different focal lengths to play around with. And overall, it's also a really stable camera. So on all those fronts, it's great. We also have a little bit more manual control than what we had in the 11 series. It's only an exposure dial, but something's better than nothing. We didn't even have that in the past. So yes, it is a better camera system. It really depends if whether you can actually see the difference between the 11 series and the 12 series or not. It's going to be a really, really personal. Okay, portrait mode on the iPhone is definitely a little bit better. Edge detection when you shoot a portrait of somebody, or even when you're shooting a portrait of like non-living subjects, like a Funko Pop or a toy or a piece of tech. Yes, it's definitely better. The edge detection has gotten better. The computational photography has grown, and that's probably because of the new image signal processor inside of these cameras as well as the A14 chip which is a lot more efficient, a lot smarter, a lot more powerful. So yes, definitely better but again I'm gonna say not by much. Most people love the portrait mode on the iPhone 10. It was revolutionary when it came out and I know a lot of people who have the iPhone 10R or the iPhone 11 series phones who love portrait mode on those devices. If you're a professional mobile photographer and if this is your main camera and you take your photography on your phone really really seriously, yes, portrait mode is better. You're gonna notice a difference. If you're a regular consumer who just likes their iPhone and likes the idea of 
shooting a regular photograph on their phone but doesn't really use that photograph professionally, it's not going to be much of a difference for you. You won't be able to make out the difference between portrait mode in the current 12 series or the 11 series. But if you ask me, it's definitely better. Furthermore, having the ability to shoot in low light in portrait mode is fantastic. You now have night portrait mode on the iPhones, which I think is a massive game changer. It is really, really good to use, but I'll be perfectly honest, I don't do a lot of portrait photography, so never really used it. And with all of us being at home and not going out and social distancing at this point, I haven't really been going out much at night to even meet my friends, so I've never been in a scenario where I've had to use it, so I literally have zero photographs taken in night portrait mode. This is me being honest with you guys. If you're into portrait photography and if your phone is your main snapper, it's right there. It's fantastic. Okay, so you have night mode available across the board on all your cameras on the 12 Pro series, and you also have night mode available across the board on the 12 series. Where this really makes a difference according to me is when you're shooting on the ultra wide lens. You always had the standard wide lens with night mode available, which was fantastic. The iPhone does a great job when it uses night mode, and it's a definitely better than not having night mode. The ultra wide used to really suffer in low light. Of course, not perfect, and you would be happier with a moment lens on your standard lens, and it would still produce better image quality. But the fact that you just have night mode on the ultra wide lens now, it's pretty great. I have to admit, it shoots pretty decent photographs for something that comes natively on your iPhone. The camera systems on phones are so diverse, we can go on talking about them because there's so many features that are packed into these systems now. So we're going to talk about Pro RAW, which is undeniably my favorite feature on the 12 Pro series, especially with respect to the cameras. The Pro RAW feature is fantastic. It's basically computational photography. It's a raw image format used together, giving you the best of computational smartphone photography while having a professional format to edit your photographs in, which is basically raw. So yeah, it's great. If you guys do want to understand the hype behind it, don't worry. I have an entire video coming out only on Apple Pro RAW where I'm going to be able to explain to you guys why it's so special. Stay tuned for that. Pro RAW is going to give you a lot more flexibility to edit your photos in post and it's definitely a fantastic feature. I'm absolutely in love with it. I think Apple nailed it here. All right, let's talk video. The iPhones have always been the king of the mountain when it comes down to shooting video. They are definitely the best smartphone if you're a video creator. Yes, there are a lot of other Android brands that are fantastic and they shoot great video, but Apple has always been the king of the mountain. They've had the best video codecs. They've had HEVC for the longest time and they just do it all correctly. Like video is fantastic. Results that you get out of an iPhone camera have been so good that people have gone out and shot full-fledged Hollywood movies on an iPhone. Not the 12 series alone, even earlier iPhones. And it does a great job. Depth of field is something that definitely lacks. You cannot adjust the aperture on your lenses. So that is always going to be a drawback. And it does have that phone look to it. But if you use a professional filmmaking app like the Moment Pro camera app, link in description, or the Filmic Pro app, these apps are fantastic. They give you full-fledged manual control on the iPhones. But even straight out of the native camera app, video on the iPhone is fantastic. Plus the 12 Pro Max has new in-body image stabilization. You know, the standard lens has that amazing new stabilization. I'll be honest with you, it's stable, but I do have an iPhone 12 mini at my disposal and that's crazy stable too. I don't see that much of a difference between the 12 Pro Max and the 12 mini when it comes to stabilization. Really, really pixel peep and you zoom in like 400%. You may see a couple of those micro jitters disappear, but when you're looking at an image not zoomed in, it looks exactly the same to me. Okay, maybe in certain scenarios that I haven't used it in like action sports, it would be better, but that's not how I shoot. Battery life. Batteries have always been the iPhone downer and up until the 11 series where they increased the size of the battery and made the phone slightly thicker. And then on the 12 series, they reduced the size of the battery and made the phone slightly thinner. Okay, I'll be honest with you. Battery life is more or less at power with the 11 series. It doesn't matter if the size is reduced or increased or any of that stuff. The new chip is efficient. It's really power efficient, which basically means to perform standard tasks that the old chip took a large amount of power to perform. This chip just takes a lot less of power. So overall, battery life is definitely good, especially on the 12 Pro Max. I don't charge this until I go to sleep at night. It performs beautifully. As you guys know, I play a lot of games and I listen to a lot of music and I use this camera a lot. It's a great performer when it comes to battery life, but if you're on a smaller iPhone like the 12 mini, you're definitely going to need to plug in your phone at least once in the middle of the day. Now at the core of every smartphone is its amazing touchscreen display. Super Retina XDR displays as Apple likes to name them, basically really great OLED displays. We have OLED displays across the line this year, which was not the case in the 11 series, so it's great. It's really good. There are two-tone displays, which basically means the auto adjustments have been fantastic. The color temperature adjusts on its own, bases your ambient lighting, making it a lot more pleasant to look at. And all of this is great. It's fantastic. It is a great display, especially when you're watching HDR content. It can go up to 1200 nits of brightness, which is fantastic for a phone. I don't know a lot of phones that can do that, but it depends what phone you're coming from. If you're coming from 11 series, it's not going to be that much different, especially if you're on the 11 Pro models, because they also had OLED displays. Coming from the regular 11 series, okay, it's going to be a bit better. I do admit having OLED is definitely better than having LCD. If you're coming from the Android camp of things, you're already used to a high refresh rate displays. And that's something that's definitely lacking. If you're going to buy a flagship phone worth $1,200 or $1,400 in 2021, you definitely want a high refresh display. The iPhone is stuck at 60 hertz.
products. I know there's a lot of arguments out there in the market that basically state that yes, but the A14 is so fast and the phone is so snappy and, and iOS is such a beautiful software that it just works, feels really, really snappy. But I have an iPad Pro and it has 120 hertz refresh rate. When you're using an iPad Pro with the exact same operating system with 120 hertz, you can notice a difference. Apple is really, really lacking on the display front this year with respect to refresh rate. Everything else is fantastic, but refresh rate. The design, we're looking at the square edges, we're looking at a brand new design that Apple has actually put out this year and I'm a massive fan. I think the squared edges are fantastic. On the Pro models with the stainless steel edges, I think the phone still looks really, really premium six months down the line. I was actually really bored of the rounded edge design that the older iPhones had because we had them from the iPhone 10 series and it was getting a little monotonous. And it's not only the design. Six months later, these phones still look and feel so much more premium than majority of the phones of the market and they don't look like anything else on the market, which is really, really great. Literally hit this out of the park this year. Okay, performance. Performance on the iPhone series has been retardedly great. Like, have you seen how powerful Apple Silicon has gotten. The A14 is fast and I'm not kidding. I know Apple always says this in every keynote that it's the fastest chip we've ever made. Yes, I know it is. They say that a lot and everyone else says that a lot. But I've edited 4K video on this phone. Any game that I've thrown on this phone, it's performed really, really well. Basically use this phone for everything like from taking photos to editing photos, shooting videos, editing videos, uploading videos. It does it all. It's an insanely fast phone. Okay, so now it's officially time for the verdict. This is what most of you guys are waiting for. Should you buy the iPhone 12 series right now? in May of 2021, or should you wait for another six months? Well, it depends. Is it a great phone? Yes. Does it still feel premium? Yes. Are the cameras good? Absolutely. Is the screen great? Yes. And no, it could have had a high refresh rate, so that's always a downer. But on every other front, yes, fantastic. Absolutely. It's definitely a great phone, but it also depends on where you're coming from. Are you an Android user? Do you want the high refresh rate? Uh, there's a lot of phones in the market that will give you that high refresh rate. This is definitely a deal breaker for a lot of people, depending on what you do. If you're on that camp, no, definitely not. Don't come to the iPhone 12 series just yet. If you're coming from an iPhone, 11 and you're looking at an upgrade right now in May 2021, should you upgrade? Honestly, if you have the money to blow, yes, definitely. It is definitely a better phone. You're not going to be disappointed in any way, but if you can wait for another few months, I would suggest you wait for the iPhone 13, especially if you're coming from the iPhone 11 series, because that's going to be a more significant upgrade for you guys, and you're going to get a lot more value for your money, and it's actually going to feel like a larger jump in specs as well, and the newer design and the newer colors, so all of that is going to be much, much better if you're moving on from an iPhone 11 series. Okay, but if you're coming from an older iPhone, an iPhone 10 series or the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 7 or any older iPhone in the market, even the SE, should you upgrade to the iPhone 12 series or should you wait for the iPhone 13? Honestly, I think for you guys, the iPhone 12 series is a massive, massive leap. It's got a new design. Everything about it is improved. It's going to feel really, really different in your hands. It's got enough premium, enough performance, enough glam and enough power inside of it for you to hold on to it for another couple of years that you've held on to your older iPhone and you're definitely not going to be disappointed. It's a beautiful phone. It's still the best iPhone that Apple actually makes, so don't worry about it. But if you can wait for six months and you can hold on to the iPhone 13 series, well then there's a saying in the tech community that the best gadget and the best tech is the one that's still not released, the one that's coming out next. You know what I'm saying? Long story short, at the end of the day, depending on where you're coming from, depending on what phone you have in your pocket right now, the upgrades can be magnificently huge or really, really small. It really comes down to a personal perspective, but it is still the most powerful and most premium iPhone that Apple makes in 2021 as of this date. Would I go back in time and buy the exact same iPhone that I've bought? Yeah, definitely. I love the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I think it's a great phone. It serves every purpose that I have. Overall, I'm really happy with it. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this brings you some value. I hope it made you understand where the iPhone 12 series stands six months after I've used it in the real world. And if it did, definitely hit that like button. Do not forget to subscribe because it's free and it definitely helps me out a lot. It helps the channel out a lot and it really motivates me to create more content for you guys out there. So stay tuned for more and hit the bell notification icon. I'm going to see you guys in the near future. Until then, this is Nitin Chawla. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Peace.